everyone, if you are prepping for the ACT and it's coming up soon and you want to be ready for it, stay tuned because I'm going to go over a couple of must know formulas for the ACT exam. Before we get going, I want to remind all of you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already, and also go to our website, supertutortv.com slash subscribe and subscribe to our awesome mailing list. That will keep you in the loop of all the awesome new videos that we have here on Super Tutor TV, and also keep you updated of any new products or offerings that we have, any coupons that we have, or sales that we have for products that we offer on our website. And if you haven't checked it out, we have an awesome full, ACT prep course available at supertutortv.com, the best ACT prep course ever. It's a video-based prep course with over 50 hours of video content created by a perfect scorer. So go check it out and let's get going with this video. There are a lot of formulas that you should know for the ACT test. And I'm not going to go in depth over all of them, but I'm going to get in depth in a couple of them that are to me sort of backbones of the test and things that come up so often that if you don't know how to use them, you are going to be in trouble. The first thing I'm gonna do is just talk you guys through some really critical formulas. If you are a subscriber of our Best ACT Prep Course Ever, we are going to put up um, a list of these formulas very soon so that you guys can download it. Slope formula, that's what we're gonna go over today, and slope intercept form, we're gonna go over that as well. Some other formulas you should know, circle formula, you should know the ellipse formula, you should know direct variation and inverse variation, parabolas, standard form of a parabola, vertex form of a parabola, how to find the vertex in a parabola, the quadratic equation, area formulas, these are some area formulas for your rectangle, for your parallelogram, for your rhombus, for your trapezoid, N-gons, so whenever you have a regular polygon, how many diagonals does it have? What is the measure of the interior angle? That kind of stuff can always be really helpful. The average formula, another really important one. And the two that I've seen come up recently on the exam that are good for you guys to know are the law of sines and the law of cosines. And again, I have these all in this video and I'm just scrolling through this. And so what I would recommend is if you need to learn these, you can pause the video and write them down and figure them out. So that's just a quick tip. These are my favorites. These are some of the ones that come up the most often. Are there more? Sure, there's a few more, um, namely the exponent formulas and the logarithm formulas are also good to know. But for today, what I'm gonna get in depth with you guys, like I said, are these two slope formulas because I find that they're probably one of the most common things on the exam. If you're comfortable with those, cool. I hope that little list that I just gave you was helpful and be on your way. But let's get into this. So what I'm gonna do with you guys today is I'm actually gonna share with you, this is from the math book that I'm in the process of writing. We're actually writing three math books on the ACT. So slope formula, let's talk about the slope formula. Here is the slope formula. Slope formula essentially is if we have two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, the slope, or m, m is just a letter that we often use to represent slope, equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's just talk about what that looks like in a coordinate plane. So here, like if we have a line here, you can see we can draw a line. And if we wanted to figure out the slope of it, this would be like x1, y1, do you guys see? And this would be like x2, comma y2. So when you see these numbers and you're like, what does that mean? You just assign them to the points like this, right? So that would be x1 and that's y1. Hopefully all of you kind of understand that or you remember that. If not, that's all that's going on here. Remember our points are always x then y, so this could be x1, y1, this is x2, y2. The one thing you wanna make sure you don't do is x1, y2, that would be wrong. Like if you said that was that and that was that. And the most important thing with the slope formula is that you do not mess up the order, meaning that you keep straight which one's the x1 versus the x2 and the y1 versus the y2. You can also flip this, meaning you could make this x2, y2, and there's no rule against that. You get to pick which one's which, but you just have to be consistent, meaning that if this one is the ones, that's a x1 and that's y1, etc. Okay, so you just have to be consistent. You can make up which one is which. It doesn't matter if it's the higher one or the lower one. The other thing that I like to say about slope is if you have a downward hill line, this is always gonna have a negative slope. So if I visualize this or if I sketch this out, I can really double check my work really quickly when using the slope equation. If it's going upwards, that means it has a positive slope. And knowing this is like a really handy trick in addition to knowing the formula. 
that's just to create a little safety net so you don't make a careless error. The biggest careless error that I see is that people reverse the order. So they do y1 minus y2 over x2 minus x1. The good news on this is if you do reverse the order, your numbers will still be right, but your sign will be wrong. So as long as you double check any slope questions by just sketching out a graph, you will catch this mistake if you happen to make it. The other thing you guys can do if you want to use the slope formula, or if you have a simple situation in which you need the slope formula, is you can program this into your calculator. And it's not necessarily against the ACT rules, at least as of right now, which is September 2017. I always recommend that you double check the rules. If you want more information on how to program your calculator with a very simple program that you can use on the ACT, and if you even want to download one that one of our interns here at SuperTutor TV wrote, and download our package of SuperTutor TV calculator programs. You can do that by going to our blog and video on ACT calculator programs. So we have a programs for the TI-84. If you have an Inspire, you're a little bit out of luck because it's a little bit harder to program, but you can Google how to find slope on a TI Inspire if you happen to have an Inspire, and there are instructions on how to do it. It is a little bit time consuming, if you have a TI-84, I, I like doing it with a program. If you have an Inspire, you can do it with the calculator, but it, it takes a little bit of time, so it's kind of a trade-off. I think the better way to do it is to actually learn how to do it if you have an Inspire, but in any case. So let's take a look at this problem. It's a pretty basic problem. What is the slope of the line containing the points 10, 7 and 14, 19 in the standard xy coordinate plane? Super easy, simple, straightforward problem. If you have a calculator program on your TI-84, you literally just enter these numbers and it's super easy. If you don't have that calculator program, then you just apply this formula, which is really simple. So we do, I, you see I have x1, y1, x2, y2. I like to write them down right over the numbers so I don't make that common error of flipping them around or doing it backwards. And then I do y2 minus y1, which is going to be 19 minus 7. And then oftentimes even so, I'll write on my paper, I'll write down the formula for myself. Writing down formulas and using your pencil often is going to help you avoid careless errors. So even though this seems like an easy problem, this is just a strategy to avoid careless errors. I do 19 minus 7 over 14 minus 10, and then I get 12 over 4, and that simplifies to 3, okay? And then if I wanted to totally double check my work, I could just sketch this out. This is going to be about 10 over and 7 up, so maybe that's like this. This is going to be 14 over and 19 up, so that's going to be something like that. And you can see that this has a positive slope. 3 has a positive slope. Looks good, and the answer is D. Cool. So that's how we do that. It's a basic slope formula kind of thing. The next thing that we have to know is something called the slope intercept form of a line. It's really handy to know this. Basically, B is going to be the y intercept. That means when x equals zero, right, this whole thing goes away because this times this is zero, and then all you're left with is B. So that's why it's the y intercept. When x is zero, this goes away, and then y just equals B, right? So good to know this. What is the slope intercept form of this? So here to do this, what we do is we want to isolate our y. So I'm going to add 2y to both sides. And then this is zeros out. And I get 8x plus 0y plus 6 equals 2y. I can just cancel that out. And then I'm just going to divide everything by 2 to get the y by itself. And I get 4x plus 3 equals y. And I can rewrite that the other way. And that's d. Cool? And I just distribute the two there and there. So make sure when you divide both sides by this, you distribute it to all the elements that are hanging out there. Okay. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Again, we were just focusing on a couple of equations that are really must-know formulas for the ACT math section, and that's your slope form and your slope intercept form. You need to know what those are, how to execute them, and then how to apply them. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want more content like this and you want like in-depth understanding of all the math sections on the ACT, again, we have the packets that I'm working from right now are all available for our best ACT prep course ever subscribers. And you can check it out. Thanks for listening. I will see all of you next time on SuperTutor TV. Ciao, ciao for now.